wife tries to force husband's family to sell their grandfather's cabin to buy her out in divorce. The brother of a good friend of mine went through a divorce last year. The divorce was fairly messy. His soon to be ex-wife was trying to get as much as she could. My friend and his siblings all jointly inherited their grandfather's cabin a few months earlier. It is situated on a private island in Canada, that has been owned by the family for four generations. It's about 5,000 square feet, and easily worth over $3 million, and their grandfather had several unexpected private offers over that value, all refused with no interest in selling. The family was notified by her lawyer that she was requesting payment to buy her out of her one-sixth ownership, each sibling owning one-third, and she was trying to claim half of her husband's share. They tried to discuss a few alternatives, such as giving her a one-sixth right to usage, but no ownership. She declined, apparently intent on forcing them to sell it, knowing none of them could afford to front the money to their brother to keep the cabin in their ownership. Their lawyer, a family friend, did a bunch of work to find a favorable solution for them. In looking over the grandfather's will, he discovered that the divorcing brother did not in fact own any part of the island with the cabin on it. It seemed that their grandfather bought up a bunch of other islands nearby the cabin, and willed them to his grandchildren separately. He only owned a small nearby island, made up of rocks and gravel. Not big enough to build on, and not worth any money at all. Not wanting to give her anything at all. They made her an offer. Attempting to look like they were giving her more than she deserved, and with the appearance of being desperate to keep ownership of the cabin, to give her 75% usage rights of the island, for 25 years, with no ownership. In the offer, they named the worthless island by its legal land title name. She made a counter offer, which was identical, but she wanted to add her rights to rent the island out for profit, and she wanted choice over her time allocation, which she drafted in the offer. They agreed. Apparently, her new boyfriend was more interested in the cabin than the money. They mailed her a set of keys for the cabin. They were keys for a master lock for their life jacket storage box on the dock at shore, as well as a fake key with a bright yellow floating foam keychain, to give her the impression that there would be a boat available to get to the island. They allowed her to believe her deal was for the cabin's island for quite a while, as the divorce was still not finalized. Her first weekend with the island was a long weekend, and she invited her family out, along with her new boyfriend. A 400 kilometers drive and were greeted by my friend's dad and their lawyer. The whole thing was planned by their lawyer, who I am fairly good friends with as well. He tells me that her family was stranded on the island for hours, as they hired a barge to ferry them over, and they waited until the barge left before going over the details of what she agreed to. He says she attempted legal action once more after that, accusing the family of fabricating the will after the fact. Apparently, her lawyer dropped the case before it even started. Update, apparently, I had a bunch of the facts wrong on this story. I was rather drunk when I heard this story originally. My friend says that the cabin was not an inheritance at all. The siblings purchased it jointly. Apparently, their grandfather had the cabin as an asset that was owned by his business. The business was bought by another company before he passed away, and the siblings quickly bought the cabin back when they discovered that it was sold. Also, the cabin was apparently not owned by the family for generations, it was a group of islands next to the cabin's island that they owned for generations. It seems the grandfather bought several more islands and had the cabin built to bring clients and business partners out for fishing trips. However, while the cabin, and the land it was built on, were not inheritances, the other group of islands were an inheritance. My friend's brother was already separated from his wife when they acquired the cabin, the wife was misinformed by a family member that the cabin was an inheritance. Now to the comments. She lives on Island of Lies. Why don't you just go back to Whore Island? I'm sorry I got distracted, I was imagining Whore Island. So basically, your friend got screwed, he inherited a piece of rock, which he gave away to his ex-wife, and his siblings got the big island with the cabin. The cabin itself might have been jointly owned, even though the island it was on was individually owned by one of the siblings. This. They got her to drop her demand on one-sixth of the cabin by granting her the bad island. 
The value of gifts or inheritance is that you or your partner received during your marriage are excluded from the division of property upon separation or divorce. You may not know, however, that you have to treat those gifts or inherited items in a specific manner in order to take advantage of that exclusion. Slash r slash quit your bullshit. If there is anything that my months of stalking r slash legal advice has taught me, it's that inheritance, as long as it is kept separate, is not considered shared marital property, and can in no way be split during a divorce. And partial ownership of a cabin is pretty much impossible to share, unlike money which can be added into a joint bank account. The whole thing is just bullshit. I actually thought this would be a legal advice post, because the answer is so clear cut. Wife gets nothing, end of story. No lawyer would even try to enforce a claim over the land. I don't know. This seems made up. For starters, the fraction should be one-eighth of the property, and it gets worse as the story unfolds. Gwats. This made me laugh but we all know it's just a story for karma. Fun though. It would be nice if it were more believable hut to each their own. His soon to be ex-wife was trying to get as much as she could. This is sort of the point of divorce. You enter into a partnership with someone and you expect them to leave empty handed when it breaks down? No. The story is almost certainly totally fabricated, but even if it wasn't, there's no details on the cause of the divorce. The only information presented was an apparent millionaire scamming his soon-to-be ex-wife out of half of their joint ownership. Going on nothing more than the story given this guy is a piece of ducking garbage and not at all to be celebrated. If I'm going through a divorce, I don't want joint ownership of a property with the person I don't want to be around anymore so painting the fictional wife in a bad light because she wants to be bought out of her stake in the property is stupid. In looking over the grandfather's will, he discovered that the divorcing brother did not in fact own any part of the island with the cabin on it. This sentence proves the story is bullshit. If the brother had no claim on the island, then her claim on his portion evaporated. So, the rest of the ruse was superfluous. My friend and his three siblings. Each sibling owned one third. That doesn't make a math. I've finally completed my divorce as of tomorrow and inheritance isn't included in the separation or divorce. It has to be treated as a separate issue. I'm in Canada so unless rules are different elsewhere, I'm not too sure what to say here. WTF When you leave a family, you don't get to continue to get the perks from being a part of that family. In America, inherited property is not communal property. She would have had zero rights to anything given to her husband by his grandfather in America regardless of when it was given. I'm shocked Canada isn't the same way. It is the same way in Canada. This story is a bit silly unfortunately. The property would have been protected. She should not and would not have been entitled to a dime of it. I knew a guy who had something similar happen to him. His wife was going to leave him and wanted a quarter of the company he and his brother inherited from their father. So, his brother bought him out for like $1,000 and then kept him on as a consultant. The divorce went through, she got basically nothing. And the guy's brother gave him his half back once it was finalized and now, they run the business together again. 